Hey there, everyone. It's George. How you doing? Thank you to all the new subscribers and uh, people for following the page. Thank you very much. I really it's very much appreciate it. Uh, so uh, today what I did was I, I, I have my RC. I put it on a pedal board, and I don't, I don't really use a pedal board, but it was convenient to do that because uh, I can leave everything hooked up and just go to a gig. Um, and so I'm going to show you the pedal board real quick. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to do uh, was talk about some of the settings uh, when you're recording your loops, both in single mode and multi-mode. I'll show you some of the adjustments I made uh, to what I did with the knobs here. So let's go. Okay, so what you're looking at is the... Uh, RC and all I did was I have I'm going into my tuner right and then I'm going into this Joyo American sound pedal which is a great pedal this is a, a Keeley called hook spring reverb it has reverb and tremolo so and then coming out of here it's going just straight into the RC and I also have it hooked up to my Akai force which is over here, uh, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. So let me just show you how um, this American pedal sounds real quickly. I really like this pedal because there's the drive. And this control, this mid control, is kind of like when you turn it uh, counterclockwise, it's like a black face. Oops, drop my pick. So, like if you have. This would be more of a tweed sound here. And you can get it real clean. But what's cool for me when I'm playing is that um, I just, like I'm, when I'm recording the tracks, I just leave this uh, on. And then I can control my reaver or uh, tremolo right here. And. I mean, does that sound cool or what? So, here's the tremolo speed right here on the top. And this pedal has reverb, so. So for what I do, I just wanted to show you guys this because uh, it's so simple and you can control everything going into the RC when, when, you're, uh, when I'm recording tracks with this. That's not to say that the... Um, sounds pretty good. I mean, that, it's really not to say that the... the RC, RC's effects aren't that good. They really are. And, um, you know, the amp simulators that are in here are, they're, it, it depends on the setting. For me personally, I would not be using, um, I would not be using the uh, Marshall amp type things and, and stuff like that. But the, the boost does sound very good. And I think we've gone over that before. So, anyways, next. I have an empty memory right here. I did record 
I, I recorded one loop in here. And what I did is I, I recorded from this uh, um, Akai force, right? Also, I do have the MIDI hooked up. And what this is doing is the, I can confirm that when you, you know, press rhythm start or all start, either way, it is sending a MIDI clock out to the Akai force. And uh, it's in perfect time. And start stop works perfectly. What it's doing though is it's triggering one loop at a time. So maybe I'll show you that in a diff different video. But uh, if you're familiar with the force, it works kind of like Ableton, where where you can you're recording you know one loop, you, you record a loop, and then um, what this is doing is just triggering that one loop. But it was really cool to use that way. It's been really cool because you can get a kick and a snare or whatever whatever you want and make the loop and then just send it into here and play along with it. Or you can do, I mean, the possibilities are endless, right? So what I did with these uh, knobs here is I programmed them so they were easy to access on a gig. So I have... Uh, this is the memory, so I can switch between songs with knob number one. Knob number two, I can switch the kit. The reason I did that is because I found that, you know, if you have a very strong rhythm in this going, right, it can, it can get overwhelming. So if you switch the kit, right, you, you still have the same pattern, but it's switching the sound of it. And some interesting things happen. You can really make the rhythm quieter by just switching the, the kit, which is cool. Also, knob number three, I have a uh, rhythm level. So I can turn the rhythm all the way down, all the way up, you know. And then knob number four, I have it at loop level. So whatever, whatever I'm doing here, uh, I can control the level of the rhythm and the level of the loop and balance them as I go along. Because sometimes they just... You know, uh, you, you when you're recording your tracks, you have to be very consistent, you know, uh, with your gain structure and how loud everything is from song to song. Because when you go to switch on a gig, of course, you want everything to be sort of balanced. And the compressor, the master compressor sort of helps along with that, but it also can compress too much. So the lower settings seem to work better. Uh, but also being able to control your rhythm level and your loop level here really works. And another thing I want to do is in the future is perhaps uh, switch, switch it out to mic level. Because I found that when Laura is singing through here, my wife Laura, when she's singing, you know, when you're going from song to song, the mic level can be a little different according to what effects you are using. So this was my solution so far, and um, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do the mic level thing, but uh, another video. So anyways, let's move on. Somebody else was asking... Uh, somebody was asking about... Uh, recording single mode and and multi mode to get different things going. So he, somebody was asking, "How do I make this?" What I did, how do I make this like four bars, right? So. So what I did is I just, you can't see, well, maybe you can. All I did was record a loop out of this Akai. Right? I recorded that on track one. It's a four-bar loop. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to use track two here. By the way, I have this, I'm in mode one, and I have this set up. I, I changed this one to, um, to just rhythm start stop, because that's what I prefer to do. Uh, and I, I do that every time. So I'm in mode one. And I've, I've been just recording like this because it's really simple. And then I change my knobs or buttons later. So let's see if we can record track two here uh, and do 12 bars. And this one will keep playing at four bars. Let's see if it works. Okay. And I'll show you. First of all, here's another thing. Before we do it, let me show you on track one, press that. Here's your settings. I have everything standard here. And then when I'm paging over, everything's set. I have this set on multi right now. I recorded it in free mode, but now it's set to four measures, okay? The loop sync is off because the reason it's off is because if you go to record track two, right, and if it's on, track two will record four bars, okay? And we want to do 12. So I'm going to leave this set in multi, leave loop sync off, okay? Those are my settings. This is tempo sync. You know, whatever, this stuff. This is the, this is the you know, what input you're going to record. Okay, so let's go on to there. Also, that's how I have it set on track. On record, uh, I have it record play. This is very important. Measure, I have to quantize. So when you hit the button, right, it's going to quantize with the internal rhythm. And it's going to quantize the loop so that uh, it's, believe me, it works. Because when you go to record, you'll see that I can press record. If I press it on beat two, it's not going to start. It'll go two, three, four, record. Because it's quantizing when it's going to record hence punch you in. It's almost like auto punch, which they also have on here. Uh, and then this is still the first loop page, track one, record. Play settings, uh, single track change, I guess that is. Uh, I, anyways, I set that to measure. You're, if you put it on immediate, as soon as you hit the button, it changes. We don't want that. We want measure, so you can hit the button and it won't change until it's a measure. So you can hit it a little bit before, you know. Uh, current track one, whatever. All start, all stop track. I always leave these on. Uh, that may uh, affect what we're gonna do. Loop link. Loop length, auto, sync, adjust, measure, beat. That's interesting. I've never even used that one. Let's explore it. Okay. So let's try to record. Uh, I think I went through here. Exit. Let's see what track two's settings are. I have it on multi, free, and loop sync on. Okay? So. Okay, so let's. I'll show you what I mean about that measure quantize.
So I can tell you right now, this changed to 12. And track one is playing along with track two. Put that little five chord on the end. Just to help you guys out. So, this kind of is a minor blues feel or something, right? It's just the 12 bar blues in A. So, what I'm going to do now, I'll adjust my sound here, get something a little more. through the mic. Let me turn this mic down. We'll do another overdub. this now it's just playing by itself so I did this in real time I didn't do the drum beat in real time but whatever let's go for a real reverb -y. fun. So notice I, I pressed stop on track two here. Uh, track one still playing. Let's see if I, I know that all start was set to on, right? So it's still not starting track one. And my click is on. This is the problem I have had with this machine, is that this. I 
can tell it's not in perfect sync when I'm starting the track by itself, okay? So, um, let's turn loop sync off again. That's track two is set to multi, and track one is set to multi. Now, let's see. And another thing. Somebody was saying, well, uh, how do I uh, turn the how do I turn the rhythm off, right? Well, I guess the easiest way is that if you don't want to hear the click anymore, which who wants to hear the click while you're jamming? Uh, menu, mixer. Uh, you page over in the mixer window. Keep going. Here's your rhythm out, right? Let me adjust. So there's your rhythm out. Uh, so so like there's also a mute setting too. So there's what it sounds like without the click, right? But notice. This is the problem I have had in multi-mode is, and I'm sure you are having it too, is that you, when you start these things, they don't go in sync, which is kind of crazy, right? So what if, we, what if we change this back to all start? Let's try that, right? We would go, to, I hit menu twice, control, mode one, and then I page over to pedal nine, and this is what I said, I have mine set to rhythm start stop. But if we go back, back double speed, current track, all start one. It's in perfect sync, right? And furthermore, what's cool, I guess, about using All Start like that is that now your rhythm, let's go to loop, press it twice, rhythm, I still have it set to guide, right?
Okay, so I put this back on all start, all, uh, all start stop. Okay, but this still doesn't solve for me the issue of I want to hear drums first. And then remember, I put that uh, R&B, that soul loop on there. If you don't want to hear your rhythm, just turn it down, you know? I mean, that's the easiest thing to do. There's a start and stop, you know, with the control thing. But this is really easy, especially if you're, if you're recording, too, I think. Okay. Now that time I just pressed it at the right time. you can see on the screen right now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go I'm gonna exit out to our main menu here so once again now you can see the lights how or, or the screen I'm using this knob for uh, memory change this knob for kit change this for rhythm level and this for loop level and the reason is is because you can balance these things and uh, out so here's the discovery I made. Loop one, remember, is... Okay, now check this out. So let's examine this. Loop one, on track, let's go over to uh, start mode immediate, stop mode immediate. I have it set to overdub. I have it on multi, and I, when I recorded this, I recorded it in free, and I only recorded four bars. Somebody was asking about this. When I recorded it, I recorded it with loop sync on, so it was syncing to the guide track, or the click, or the rhythm, whatever you set it on, it will sync. And to me, that's the biggest thing, because then it's in sync with the internal clock, okay? Now the reason it's in multi is because the reason it's in multi is because now by the way when this is set like that and you hit loop if you look at the top you can see that it switches to track two and you can scroll through the different settings in your tracks, just like that. Okay, turn this down a bit. So what I did on track two here is I recorded it with loop sync on. Loop sync off on track one, loop sync on here, and then when it's when I'm done recording, I turn the loop sync off. The next thing I noticed that was interesting is I'm paging through here. Let me exit back to here. The first loop page. Playback. When you hit play, remember I have it to. Uh, this set to change tracks by measure. These things I never touch. Some, some, someone can explain that. Loop length auto, but I move this to sync adjust to beat instead of measure. So that seemed to help. And then I did set this to all start. 
uh, just for this purpose because it seems to work. I mean, you could start them both at the same time, right? Uh, which is not how I use the machine personally live, but that will work for you. Okay. Tell you what, let's go see what track one is set on. Exit. Loop. Track one, play. Yeah, I set it to beep, so this is a, a global setting for the tracks, you know, or it's remembering. I suppose you can change it on every track. Yeah. See what I did there? So I have this set to beep. So let's try stopping it. There's my kick. Turn it up. I mean, you do have to, you know, press the button somewhat in time. Just to be sure, I am moving track two. I'm adjusting that one. Okay, so let's move it to measure. Oh. For some some reason, uh, you'll notice that when you press these buttons and you have something playing, it won't change. It has to kind of recalibrate, you know. So see what happens? It's a perfect example is it's totally out of sync and you know you would think that it's set to measure sync adjust i don't know what that means really but it is definitely not in sync right so let's stop it again i'm going to change it to beat Now, I did press the button on the beat, or, you know, close to it. I mean, it seems in sync. And then, let's go back to my main page to show you what I meant about the, uh, about the levels. Remember I set this thing? video and I'm gonna see if I can start and stop the rhythm on its own so I had I went to menu hit it twice control function mode one and pedal nine remember I I usually have this set to rhythm start and stop uh, I set it to all so I can get these to just start at the same time. So let's stop them. And I'll go to what I usually set it at, which is... I didn't pass it there. There it is. Rhythm start stop. So... I started track one, now I'll start two. I mean, it's in sync. It's in sync, so exit. I'll show you what I meant with the hit.
turn the loop down a little bit. And what's cool about changing the kit is like it, it changes your your sound of your of your patterns, you know. I, you know, like the that kind of tight fake hi-hat sound, which is cool. I love the 808 on here. I think it sounds cool. I don't know if it sounds like an 808, but it sounds cool. And this, the cajon is usually kind of fun. And this is what I mean, is that I'm turning the rhythm way up, and then rhythm just by itself. idea right now look at this that worked as now it's blinking when this is blinking I noticed this in single mode stop it again notice this is blinking in time with the the orb, uh, and if I start my track one, which is my kick and snare, it's gonna. It has no problem syncing to the internal rhythm. I mean, it's it's already in time, right? And then when I go to start. Really, you know, start and stop tracks. So there you have it. I hope this certainly helped uh, for some of your sync issues, and uh, it was fun to show you guys this. Uh, hopefully, you'll get something out of it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, any questions, just put them in the comments. And uh, thank you to all the new subscribers again. Really appreciate it. Um, and check out the videos for the band. Uh, Laura Rain in the Caesars. Right here, this is our vinyl record. And 
we got to get Laura to sing into this machine. So that's coming next. Thank you. 